thank my coaches. Um, you know, without them, none of this would be possible. They've done a great job uh, recruiting you guys to, to, to this visit so far. And um, let me just talk a little bit about it, coaches because I think that's important. Uh, when I hire coaches, and, and by the way, I'm brand new here. I've been here two weeks. Uh, so we are still going to be adding some additions to this staff. We have an offensive coordinator to still hire. Uh, we have a defensive back coach to still hire. We have a defensive line coach to still hire. And then we have uh, some, some graduate assistants, okay? But when we hire coaches here, the first thing we look for is great character men, okay? It's easy to find football people. It's easy to find experience. What's not easy to find is the right people. So the first thing I want to tell you about the coaching staff is these guys are professional people. They care about your young man. They care about what he does in the classroom, what he does off the field as much as they do on the field. And that will be the trend that we continue here with the hiring of our coaches. So thank you to my coaches. Um, this is a special place, and I, hopefully you get a feel for that today. I had a secondary coach that we were interviewing yesterday, and he was excited about coming here to interview and uh, for the job and all that. And then after he got here, he said, I was hoping I would get here and get the warm fuzzies about being at Missouri Valley, and I did. And the reason that I did is because of the people. There's great people here. We have great support from our administration, uh, and uh, you'll see it today and you'll realize that this is just a really special place. So, um, you know, the first thing I want to say is, is welcome, okay? Welcome to all of you. Uh, you know, you, we hope you're future Vikings. You know, that, that's what you're here for. And um, what I want to do today is hopefully you learn a little more about Missouri Valley from an academic standpoint, from an athletic standpoint, and then obviously from a social standpoint. All three of those components are vital, you know, to your success here and uh, the development of your young man. So, again, welcome and thank you for being here. Go ahead, next slide, please. Uh, the first thing I want you to know is that we will recruit character first. Before we look at whether a young man can help us on Saturday, we're going to first look at, is this the right person to bring into our program? And a lot of parents out here today, and we appreciate you being here. What I want you to know is, as parents, is we will not surround your young man with bad character people. And if we make a mistake and bring in a bad character person, I assure you that I will fix that immediately. So the number one thing we're looking for here is character. Next slide, please. Uh, we expect proper conduct at all times and, and to do things right. We all know what is right and what's wrong. We expect you to do what's right. Next slide. Um, playing football here at Missouri Valley is by invitation only. All right? So I'm going to talk to you a little later about numbers and who actually, that by, from a number standpoint, how many people actually play college football. Well, we invited you all to be here today, and you should feel glad that you've achieved enough in your academic and uh, playing career to this point that you had an invitation to come to a college visit because it's, it's a credit to you and what you've accomplished at this point. Next slide. Um, it's not a right. Playing college football is not a right. It's a privilege. And I tell the players that all the time. Nobody owes you anything, okay? Nobody owes you anything. It's a privilege, privilege to play college football, and it's certainly a privilege to play college football here. And when you go through this day and see this great place, I think you'll agree with me on that at the end of the day. All right, next slide, please. Um, I tell players all the time, and again, I've only been here two weeks, so I'm new to our players here. Um, some of them have played for me in the past, but I tell players that players never rise to a low level of expectations. So we are going to uh, set a standard, a very high standard, in everything we do in this program. From an academic, from a social, and from a playing standpoint, we're going to set a high standard, 
And my job as the coach is to hold everybody accountable to achieving that standard, okay? And so I always tell players, just like your parents or your family or your guardian or whoever has high expectations for you, we are going to have high expectations for you. And again, that's not just on the football field. That's in everything off the field as well. Next slide, please. So I basically have three main roles uh, on this team. I don't, I don't overburden players with roles. The first one is 100% attendance, all right? You cannot be successful if you are not there. So 100% attendance means, yeah, football-related activities, class, study hall, all those things we demand 100% attendance at, all right? So that's rule number one. Now, I always say excused absences are okay. What we're talking about is the unexcused absence. So, you know, hey, I had to go home. Uh, you know, I had to watch my little brother. My car broke down. As long as you call us in advance, that's an excused absence. Not showing up and not telling anybody is unexcused. Okay? So we demand 100% attendance. The next thing we demand is being on time. And for me, on time is early. And I always relate it to this. If one of these coaches starts a meeting at 9 a.m., or better yet, a professor starts a class at 9 a.m., and you walk in at 9 a.m., and you're shuffling your papers around, adjusting your seat, getting stuff out of your book bag, you're a distraction to everybody in the room. And you didn't just waste one minute of the professor's time, you wasted one minute of time for everybody sitting in the classroom. And we are not going to be a distraction here. So we ask that you're here on time, which is early for us, okay? And then the last thing is 100% effort, which sounds easy. I'm going to give 100%, but really when it comes down to it, when things don't go well for student athletes, it comes back to that, not giving 100% effort. And I'm going to talk about that a little more when we go here. So those are my three big rules. And um, we have, uh, we hold, hold the standard. You've got to do those three things to, uh, again, class, study hall, uh, football-related activities, what have you. If you fail to do that, one of these three things and meet the obligation, we have what we call the Saturday morning fun run, which begins at 6 a.m., okay? So if you as a student athlete miss unexcused or you're late unexcused, you'll be at the 6 a.m. fun run where we will not scream and holler at you, but you will sweat, and you will sweat a lot. And that'll, that's what the 6 a.m. fun run is. If you do it a second time, now your whole position group will be at the 6 a.m. 6 a.m. fun run on your behalf. Okay, so if you're a DB, that means every DB on the football team. We have about 180 players, okay? So you just affected about 25, 30 guys' life right there because you're not doing what we're asking you to do. If you do it a third time, the whole offense or defense, whichever side you're on, okay? A fourth time means the whole team. And normally it doesn't get to that. Peer pressure will set in at that point. But if it gets past that, then we'll have a discussion on whether this is the right fit for, for both of us, for you and for us, okay? So those are really my three big rules, all right? Next slide, please. So this, again, is what we expect 100% attendance at and being on time. Already talked about that. Next one. Okay. The next thing I'd like to say in regards to the classroom is there are serious students here. Okay? And I'm big on competition. Let me just tell you that. Everything we do in this program is going to be centered around competition. Competition is the American way. And the sooner we learn to compete, the better we're going to be. All right? Well, I don't just expect my student athletes to compete on the football field. I want them to compete in the classroom as well. All right? There is no excuse why we can't compete in the classroom and be just as good as the top students in every class, okay? So when it comes to class, we expect our, our student athletes to sit in the front row, to be engaged, to take notes, and have good demeanor, as opposed to sitting in the back of the class, 
having a hood over your head, slouch back in your chair and having bad demeanor. Because being a college student is like anything, all right? Professors are human. And if they see you in the front row every day and they see you engaged and taking notes, when it comes to grade time and you're in between that B or C range, they're going to give you the B, okay? And so that's what we expect out of our players in the classroom. All right, next thing. Okay, I already talked about it. There are serious students here that want to get a degree and want to move on with their career. We're going to compete with those students. All right, next one. So you're probably already thinking, God, this guy's a, he's a drill sergeant, all right? Um, one of the biggest things about college is we want to have fun, too. We want to have fun in the football program. We want you to have a social life, all right? It's weird at 18 years old if you don't want to have a social life. So part of coming to Missouri Valley is we want you to have fun. And so I always go through this time management exercise with young players, all right? Everybody, we get 168 in a week. Everybody gets the same amount of time. Time is precious. Nobody can buy time. We all get 168 hours in our week, okay? Most of us are going to average somewhere in the neighborhood of eight hours a night of sleeping. Some more, some less. But let's just say it's eight. So that's 56 hours in a week. That leaves 112 hours left in the week, and all we've done is slept so far. All right? A typical class load will be about 15 hours. Okay, so you'll have five classes that meet for three hours a week, 15 hours. That's about average. So that brings you down to 97 hours. Uh, we will never require more than 20 hours of football-related activities in a week, and that's at the height of the season. Okay, in the off season, it's probably more like 10, okay, other than spring ball. That might get back up closer to the 20 again. But let's just say 20 and take worst case scenario, all right? That's 77 hours remaining in your week, okay? We will have a study program for the students, the student athletes on our team that aren't doing well, okay? So let's just say that that's you. And let's take eight more hours off. That's 69 hours remaining in your week. And some of you might have a work-study job, okay? Most of you won't, but some will. But let's again take the worst-case scenario and take six more hours off. So that leaves 63 hours left in your week after you slept, gone to class, done all your football-related activities, gone to study hall, and done all that. 63, 63 hours left in your week for free time. When you divide that by seven days a week, that's nine hours a day to do whatever you want to do and have fun after you fulfilled all your football and academic requirements. Okay? And our students have fun here. You'll, you'll hear from some of them today. And we want you to do that, but we just want you to understand priorities. And I think it's very important time management skills for young freshmen coming into college. All right, next slide. So this is what a typical week looks like in season for us, okay? Sunday will be the review and the run. So we play on Saturdays. Sunday we'll review and run. What does that mean? First thing is we're going to review the tape from the day before. You don't get any better without reviewing the tape that you just played. That's the number one teaching tool you have, is watching yourself play every week, okay, and getting better from the mistakes. We're the type of program that we are going to try and reinvent the wheel every week, all right? We are going to put good sound systems in in training camp, and we're going to teach fundamentals here. We're going to teach how to block. We're going to teach how to tackle. We're going to teach how to pursue the football, all right? We're going to teach the elementary parts of this game so if you ever play for another coach, your fundamentals will fit into whatever scheme it is that they have. All right? So that's Sunday. We're going to review the game we just played. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to have a uh, rundown on Sunday, the day, day after the game. Why do I do that? So a little story. A few years back, um, I was coaching defensive line in, in a professional organization. And uh, through the first eight games, the so first half of the season, 
we had five Achilles go and four ACLs. So we had nine catastrophic injuries in the first half of the season. So if you're worth your salt as a coach, you start looking at yourself first and saying, what am I doing that's wrong here? So we flew all these specialists in to analyze what we were doing, everything we were doing within the program, and they looked at it and they just watched us observe for two weeks, and then they gave us their conclusions. And one of the things they said at the end is a lot of the reason that you're getting so many injuries is because the day after the game, you aren't running the lactic acid out of the kids' muscles. You're allowing them to just sit around and, and, and not get moving, and kids are getting hurt from that. So we changed that. We changed a couple other things that they gave us. And the next half of the season, we didn't have any catastrophic injuries. So at that time, I had never been a head coach. I said to myself, self, if you're ever a head coach, you need to make sure you run the, the players down after the game to prevent injury. Everything we do here is about preventing injury, all right? And people say today, well, I don't know if I'm going to let my kid play football. I'm worried about him getting hurt. Football has never been safer than it is today. There's so much more research that goes into player safety today. The equipment's so much better today than it used to be. It's never been safer, okay? So just know that coming in to play college football, everything we do is going to be about player safety in our weekly schedule, okay? So that's Sunday. Monday is totally off. Monday is an academic day. That's a day to get into the professor's uh, office hours, get into the tutoring, do a little extra work, those kind of things. And make sure that you start to work week off right with your academics, okay? So there will be no football obligations on Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are very similar, okay? We will have a hour meeting, and that's probably going to be more like an hour and a half. So every day we have a team meeting because we teach complimentary football here. We teach team game. We teach that every day. So we have, therefore, a team meeting every day, all right? Then you will have an offense and defense unit meeting. Then you will have a position meeting, and then you will go out on the field. That's the way it works every day. So really, that meeting process takes more like an hour and a half as opposed to an hour. And then practices for me are short, but they're fast. We practice fast and we compete, all right? It's lively, we have fun, we play music, we compete, all right? We put our best offense against our best defense quite a bit, and we have results for the loser in the drills. We might start a practice off with our best DB going against our best receiver one-on-one -on -one with everyone around watching. We'll put their picture up in the team meeting. We'll have everyone place their, black, their bets, and we'll start practice with a competition. I might take our kicker. I might put him on the 30-yard line, and I might say, if you hit this field goal, we're no conditioning today. You miss, we're conditioning. Everybody, all right? So just know we're going to compete in everything we do, and that's kind of how practice is. Lively, music, fast. I can't emphasize fast enough, okay? Um, so when we get to the games on Saturday, it's actually slowed down for us because we, we practice so fast. And then Friday is a shorter day, uh, you know, more of a walkthrough day, but we still try to break a sweat in meetings and get ready to go play the game on Saturday. So that's kind of a, what a week looks like. Next slide, please. So college football is now, has always been, and will always be about who outlasts who. So let me talk about that a little bit because I think that's important. I get asked all the time, well, how many players are you going to carry on the team? Okay, we're going to carry about 180 players on this team. So when you come in here, say you're a strong safety, okay, you might be the sixth strong safety on the depth chart the day you walk in, all right? So what? Okay? Number five and number four might quit. Number three might flunk out. Number two might get hurt. And you might be number one by the first game. Okay? 
or it might take you a little longer to get on the field. Everybody's growth is going to be different. But the point is, you're all here for a reason. We wouldn't have invited you here today if we didn't think you could play for us. Okay? So just know that, again, college football is about who outlasts who. So if you come in here and you bust your tail and you do the things you're supposed to do, you will play on that field. Okay? You'll get out on that field. But nobody will get on that field until you're ready. All right? And, and that's the thing that I want to emphasize. All right? All right, next slide. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I always go through this uh, exercise with high school players, okay? Uh, last year in the United States, there were 1,036,842 high school football players in the country, okay? Um, there were 316,000 senior high school football players in the country. Out of those seniors, 19,396 went away to play college football. That's all levels. One, two, three, and NAIA. Okay? Um, there were, out of 19,000 college football players, 16,300, I'm sorry, out of uh, 73,000 college football players, 16,000 of those 73,000 were seniors, okay, in college football. 255 got drafted in the NFL, all right? That's less than 1% of the top number. Why am I telling you all this? Because your number one job here and our number one job is to get you to graduate. We don't want to just know what a freshman looks like. We want to know what a graduate looks like, and we're going to try and recruit graduates here, okay? Because the numbers tell me you aren't playing pro football. now. I have 15 years in pro football. We'll have other coaches on this staff that have been around pro football, all right? We want guys who want to come in and achieve that level. That's what we're looking for. And we want to help you get to that level. But we also want you to understand that, like Coach just said, everybody's got an expiration date, okay? And when that expiration date comes, you need a degree so you can go about the rest of your life and be successful. So you look at the numbers, the numbers are very clear of what our number one job is, and that's to help you get across that stage on, on graduation day. All right, next slide. A lot of parents in here, okay? Um, parents, we want you to be a friend and an ally and a resource to us. That, that's, you know, we want this to be everybody in. We want the community involved, we want parents involved, we want administration involved, because it's more fun when everybody's involved and pulling in the same direction. And that's how you really start winning and win, winning big. So we want you parents to be a friend and ally and a resource to this program. Next slide. However, we do not discuss playing time or strategy with parents. Next slide, okay? So this isn't high school football, all right? You aren't going to play because your dad's on the school board or your brother's a coach or somebody donated a lot of money, all right? We are going to play the best players, and that's who's going to get on the field on Saturday, and there's going to be no politics involved in it, all right? Even at the small college level, there is a lot of money that goes into college football. And if you listen to our president when he introduced me on this very stage about a week and a half ago, he talked about wanting to win. And when you look at colleges around the country, whether they're, I can give you examples of big schools like Virginia Tech, okay, the University of Alabama, or plenty of small schools. When football wins, the whole school does better. The enrollment goes up, Everybody does better when football wins, okay? There is a lot of money involved in college football, even at this level. So I owe it not just to every player and to every coach whose career is based on winning and losing, but I owe it to the whole school to do everything in my power to win football games, okay? And every decision I make as a head coach will be that in mind. Is this going to help us win or is it not? And if it's not going to help us win, we aren't doing it. 
because winning, again, makes us all better, okay? So if you come here, just know there'll be no politics involved, all right? And the best players are going to play. Now, we will try to find roles for as many players as we can to get them on the field. We want to get as many guys as we can on the field, but never until they're ready, okay? And so, as I said, with you parents, we don't discuss playing time, we don't discuss strategy, but we want you to be a friend and an ally and a resource to us. Now, this is my resume, okay? That's actually now 15 years in the pros, I need to update that. Uh, four years in Division I, uh, 12 pro playoff games, two Grey Cup championships, FCS national playoffs, numerous All-Pros, numerous All-American. I'm the winningest head coach in Lyon College history. I say all that to say this, if your resume mirrors mine, then I'll talk to you about playing time and strategy. But if not, I just appreciate you being a friend and an ally and a resource to us. And, and, and that's, you know, that's to you parents. All right, next slide. Um, I pretty much already talked about this, okay? We don't have favorites. We don't play any politics. I don't like politics. They divide us. We don't talk politics. There's no politics here. We're going to play the players who can help us win. Next slide. So we have an awesome financial aid and scholarship situation here. It's the best in the country. It's one of the reasons why I really wanted this job. All right, we have a great scholarship financial aid situation. All right, now this isn't the University of Alabama where every player is going to be on a full football scholarship. All right, this is small college football. So when we package your young man, we try to get the best package for every kid that we can get. Now, at this level, some of you might get more money from financial aid. Some of you might get more money from the academic office. Some of you might get more money from the football office. But if I put $10,000 in this hand and put $10,000 in this hand, do you really care where the money came from? Okay, so just know that everybody's package is going to be different. Some of you might get more from a different office, but we are going to try to make the best package we can for every kid in here. All right? And our financial aid director will be here in a little while, and he'll talk to you more about that. Okay? All right, next slide. Um, why Missouri Valley? All right? So when I came here, I had to think, you know, this, why do I want to come to Missouri Valley? And I had my reasons. These are the reasons why I think Missouri Valley is a great fit for you. Okay? Number one, not a lot of schools can say this. We stand by our scholarship in case of injury, all right? So let's say that, you know, you have a catastrophic injury and you can no longer play the game. They stand by the scholarships here. That's not true everywhere. And let me tell you this about football scholarships. Football scholarships are one year, okay? And at the end of the year, it's decided whether it's renewed or not. And anyone who tells you different is lying to you. They are, they are one-year things. So for us here at Missouri Valley, anybody who's on football scholarship money, we reevaluate at the end of the year. And I'm a very loyal person. So what I'm telling you is, if I have a kid who's in here and he's busting his tail and doing the right things, he's going to get increased at the end of the year. And those who aren't will possibly be decreased. So just understand that about college football, okay? But we do stand by our scholarships uh, from the standpoint of injury, okay? Uh, great college atmosphere with the average class size being 14 to 1. So I gave the example earlier about sitting in the front row of a class. You are a 14 to 1 student faculty ratio here. Why is that important? Because your professors are going to know you by face and personally. If you sit in that seat every day in class and all of a sudden you aren't there, they're going to know. Your professors will watch you play on Saturday. That's the beauty of coming to a school like 
Missouri Valley is you have a personal relationship with your professor, okay? You can go to some big schools and you just are a face in the crowd and a number and you never have those personal relationships. Here you do. So that's another reason why I think Missouri Valley is a great place. We are the winningest program in NAIA in football, all right? So actually right now we're five games behind one of our conference opponents. I'm not even going to mention their name, all right? But we have been back and forth between the winningest programs in NAIA between us and them for the last couple of years. There is a huge tradition here, all right? There's a tradition of winning and there's a tradition of winning big. And what we're trying to do is get back to those ways. All right. I already talked about our generous scholarships. We have top flight facilities here. You're going to see them. So you don't have to believe me. You're going to see them. All right. We have a, a weight room. So I'm the son of a coach. My dad is was a uh, coach for, he's still coaching, but 40 years. He's been in Division I pro football, and he's been a head coach at small colleges like this. We have a weight room that's as good as any Division I school weight room I've ever been in. You're going to see it today. We have great facilities here. So that's another reason why I think that this is a great place. And lastly, is you have a great opportunity to come in and play fast. And what do I mean by that? Well, not only could you possibly play fast on our varsity, but we have a JV program where a lot of schools don't. And Coach Purdom already talked about our JV program. It's awesome. You come to college football so you can play college football. So even if you aren't ready to play on the varsity level, you're going to get live action game reps, and you're going to get tape right away playing on the JV level. All right? So you get a chance to actually play here. All right? And, and not everybody can say that. So those are just some of the reasons why I think Missouri Valley is it. A great opportunity. All right, next one. Okay, um, with that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll thank you for being here.